It's the state of the dungeon. It's a video that Rob does about his games. Yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rob, and welcome to my state of the dungeon, wherein I tell you all the deeds that happened in my real-life tabletop game here from the remote bunker that is my basement. Uh, we played remotely over Discord, and all members of the group were present. The game took place on May the 16th. And, uh, of course, the group is made up of, uh, by superhero name, Muscles, uh, Bulwark, Ghost, Rook, and Sentinel. At the time, they are at the rear of the Bank of Montreal, uh, attempting to put down a gifted uh, who has decided to break into the Bank of Montreal. So, uh, the group, having already knocked out several of the goons that were guarding the back alleyway to the bank, uh, went in through the broken door that the uh, bank robber had taken. At the far end of the alleyway, there was still a group of goons at a van that had that were out of gun range at the time, so the group ducked in and didn't really pay them much mind. When they went inside, they found out that there were several uh, staff from the bank who were uh, tied up and gagged, and there was one security guard who was down on the ground. Uh, he had been beaten unconscious. Uh, looked like he had been very bruised in the facial region. Uh, he was down for the count. The group uh, went looking for keys, and at that point, they split up. Uh, Rook and Muscles decided that they were going to go deeper into the bank. And in the back door of the room, they looked, they found a hallway. Uh, one which led to some unconscious security guards. The other one led to some unconscious staff. Doors from either side. So they went down the one hallway with the unconscious guards and heard uh, sounds, loud, angry voices coming out of an office. While this was going on, the rest of the group had heard the thugs coming from the alleyway. Pretty brave, because Muscles had picked up a van and thrown it at them. Uh, but they still came down and went into the bank. When they did this, or, or just before they did this, I should say, they didn't actually go in because the rest of the group had heard that they were coming and charged out at them. Uh, it was relatively quick fight, only really notable because of the simple fact that, unfortunately, uh, well, Sentinel's luck was not very good. He misfired with his repulsor blasts at a goon and instead sent the van that was directly in front of the doorway crashing into the back of a laundromat. Through the back of the laundromat, his power is quite significant. And so he did some significant property damage, destroyed the van. Uh, but the rest of the team there, between Ghost and uh, Bulwark, were able to uh, knock out the goons, uh, relatively simply. Standard goons, not much to say. Uh, so the fight was over very quickly before they could go back in. Now, while they were doing this, uh, Muscles and Rook were preparing to go into the office where he heard the voices, thinking that perhaps the gifted might be in there. They charged in, and it turns out it was not the gifted. It was one of the goons with a gun who was holding it on somebody who looked like the bank president. And that was a fight that didn't take very long either. Uh, Muscles attempted to walk over and grab the gun from the goon, an AR-15, and uh, miss. Turns out that his big mitts are st he's still learning to control his extra size. Uh, so, um, I really, I'm going to have to take a little while to remember everybody's names, but Rook moved in and blasted the goon, crumpling him. So, uh, the bank manager was grateful, but this didn't solve their mission, and they heard gunshots from behind, but they assumed the group could take care of the goons. Um, but it was clear that they did not, uh, they had not found the, the gifted yet, and that was their only real priority. 
Uh, the bank manager said something about what the goon had been asking about, but they moved on. Inconsequential to them. So, they met up again after, you know, discussing what they had each found, and then decided to take the avenue past the bank teller, or the bank president. Uh, this led them into the security area, including the vaults and uh, the safety deposit area. Going in, they found that the vault itself had been attacked by the gifted. He's a fellow in red jumpsuit, bright blonde hair, uh, able to use light powers. And they all were expecting the heroes to come through. There were three other goons as well with guns, and they were all pointing at the door. They were waiting for them. There were a number of guards who were down on the ground, a couple of them who had been shot. Uh, a couple who had been knocked unconscious by these, the Gifted's uh, light-blasting powers. So a fight took place. It wasn't a great deal of a fight. Uh, Sentinel moved into the room, drew some fire, um, but he himself was not able to significantly blast the bad guy. Uh, hit him, but you know, did not do a, a great deal to him. Uh, then Muscles came in. Uh, while the rest of the group added support, mostly taking down the, uh, the goons, who dropped relatively easily, but they all outlasted their boss, because Muscles pancaked him into the vault, punching through the vault using his non-enhanced body, uh, as the meat in a sandwich between Muscles, who is considerably harder, and the vault door, which is generally unyielding unless it's somebody like Muscles pushing on it. So he was badly injured from that, but did manage to get a blast off into Muscles' chest at point-blank range. It's hard to miss. Uh, but Muscles responded to that by grabbing him and just suplexing him back onto the hard tile floor and pff, knocking him out. As a matter of fact, he's very badly injured. A number of his bones went into places they shouldn't have. After that, the rest of the goons were ready to fight back. You know, they're still used to the idea that guns kill people. Then Bulwark, who had created a force field around the whole group so that nobody else was going to get injured, stepped up and says, if you continue fighting, we give you to him. And he made a great cool roll. The, the goons were like, you know what, our boss is down. These guys are more superheroes, and we just have little guns. They put them down and surrendered showing that villains can be smart. And so the police came and took charge of the bad guys. But while they heard the sirens, half of the group was like, well, maybe we should kind of stick around. We're trying to do a PR thing here. The rest of the group were like, you know what? We caused a bit of property damage, and we're not sure we want to be detained by the, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police or the uh, Montreal Police Force. So they took off. They ran out the back through the laundromat, because when they got to the alley, the Toronto police, or the Montreal police, had uh, each of the ends of the alley blocked off and were advancing. So when they came out, the police were all held up their guns and said, freeze. They didn't want to freeze, and they ran straight in into the laundromat, with the exception of Bulwark. Bulwark had two of the thugs, and he was just walking towards the police which freaked them out. Here's the 17-year-old scrawny kid who is easily carrying two goons by their chest fronts uh, walking towards them, and they didn't want to shoot and risk hitting one of the people who were clearly unconscious. So the rest of them ran through. Uh, some of them were having difficulty going through the wreckage of the, um, the laundromat that the wall had partially caved in and the ruins of the van were strewn about so by the time they got out the front of the laundromat uh two people had were able to dart out and that was ghost and uh rook so ghost well zipped right across no problem she's she's practically a ghost and her flying ability makes things like that easy rook on the other hand tried running across and a police car hit him Instinctively, he turned and threw up his reflection powers just before the collision so that the kinetic damage from the car impacting him was almost perfectly reflected back into the car, which was 
just basically pushed in the engine block and split the car into a Y shape. I rolled really good for the damage, so therefore the damage to the car was pretty bad. Um, the cops bolted out before they got plowed by their broken car and left Rook kind of tangled up in there. So eventually Sentinel and, uh, Sentinel and, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. It was Muscles and uh, Rook that got out first because Muscles took off and didn't turn around and look back until he was well clear of the area. Um, Interesting bit of party unity, but Muscle doesn't seem to care very much about sticking with the rest of the group. And he took off. Um, between uh, Ghost and Sentinel, they you know saw that, that Rook was trapped. Go uh, Ghost took one look at it, fired her power blast into the side of the car, and broke it. <laughs> it completely sheared off the quarter that was kind of like a jaw hanging, uh, keeping Rook trapped, so... He just stepped out, thanks, and then they took off. Um, there wasn't a great deal to the pursuit after that. Uh, they ran pretty quickly, and then Chauffeur uh, came and picked them up in the bus, and then he, they went around to pick up Muscles, who was heading back to their rendezvous point by a circuitous route. Of course, to ca um, sorry, Bulwark, uh, when he was close enough and figured he had bought enough time for the rest of the team, uh, took the two goons, dropped them, dropped his density-enhancing powers, turned on his flight, and whoosh, flew out. A couple of goons tried shooting at him, but it didn't go very well, and he got away cleanly. Awfully hard to catch somebody who can fly. So they made it back to the bus. The bus got back to the airfield. They got onto the aircraft, and they whoosh, flew off. As they were flying, for the most part, they were pretty much home free, with the one exception. Chauffeur brought their attention to the fact that there was a follower. There was a plane that was that was flying right behind them, keeping them visual. And he couldn't do anything, obviously, to, to get rid of them. It's a commercial plane. It's not a, a fighting craft. But he's like, you know what? I bet you guys could do something about that. And sure enough... Um, Rook basically kind of leapt into the computer systems of the plane and made it go haywire. And uh, he tried controlling the plane, which didn't work very well um, because he's not, you can't instantly get into a hardened system like that and shut it off. That's really another power altogether. But he was able to mess with it to the point where they were able to get away. Uh, because he knows military chain of command. So when he got into their communication systems, he told them they were required to head back to base. And he did it in an authoritative enough method that he completely, completely messed with the pilot. And so they broke off, and they were home free. So the group got away, and they got back to base. There was some slight admonishment for the damage that they had done, but... Uh, in general, uh, Lord Warbridge was very happy to see them back and happy to see that they had uh, successfully accomplished their mission. They were able to kind of check back, and they found out that almost all direct media had been scrubbed of any me measure or mention of superpowers. Everything was done according to the reports that had been out uh, with conventional explosives and that uh, there were numerous teams of bank robbers, and that some of them had gotten away, which was the group. They got basically tailed as being part of the problem. Not a lot of eyeballs on what actually had happened. Uh, fortunately for the group, they found out that their hel helmets that they were all wearing had a uh, constant camera going. So, at the very least, Sentinel is able to go back and look at their what they had done, and he's been taking notes as to what he thinks they can improve on or tactics they might be able to use together, things like that. And uh, that is all available for them to look at as well, so they can see their successes as well as their failures and, uh, and learn. They were then given a period of time to train, to work on spending some of those character points that they had accrued over the first session, their prologue, and some of them, you know, uh, train in a variety of ways. Some of them are trying to overcome their weaknesses and come to grips with their powers. Some of them started working on enhancing their powers, and some of them just started training to be better 
at various things. So all in all, uh, they made use of a number of their character points under this regimen. And then after a, a long day of working out, they were given uh, you know, another day to, to, to do some work before Warbridge came up and said, hey, we got another, another mission for you. Since you did very well at stopping a member of the gifted and demonstrated that you can work together with some competence, I would like you to take the fight back at the group that tried to apprehend you when you first got your powers meaning the folks in the black van, black suits, SWAT vests, and everything. The group thought about it for a bit, and but they were pretty amenable to it. I mean, you know, realistically, there was might be some anger there, and different people had their own reasons. But the purpose is to free one of the people that Warbridge originally had targeted to uh, keep away from these folk and bring back to uh, Foxhaven. And he wasn't 100% successful in that, so he wanted them to go and try to free one of those people. To do this, they're going to have to go to the Baltic Sea, that is, you know, uh, sorry, the Bering Strait between uh, Russia, uh, between Siberia and Alaska. And there is a decommissioned cruiser out there which has been recommissioned and fixed up so that it's suitable for the purposes that the adversary force are using. And they are to go there and attempt to get into the prison level of it and free the prisoner they're looking for. He gave them intelligence on where the craft is going to be at the time they're going to attack it, and also some notification of what they can expect. For instance, they have an anti-missile system on it, uh, the Phalanx uh, Vulcan miniguns that are uh, guided by radar that can shoot down uh, missiles that uh, attempt to... Um, attack it, as well as lots of trained military professionals on board. Also some other defenses, but you know, nothing that they should have to worry about. So they come through, uh, they, they fly back over to uh, Vancouver, and they get a on a boat. Uh, it turns out that uh, Chauffeur does not like boats very much. Mostly he doesn't like the fact that he gets he gets seasick, so he's taking seasick tablets. Um, but he is perfectly capable uh, capable of piloting one. So they get out to the required place at the required time. It is night. They go without lights. Strangely enough, it's the boat that they're going to also has no lights. It's off the books, and they they get a beat on it. So their first idea is they're going to try to take out that defense system because. Chauffeur is a little bit nervous. Those miniguns can absolutely shred his ship if they get a bead on it. So they come up with the idea that, first of all, they're going to have Ghost go astral, fly over, do some recon. At the same time, Takashi is also going to fly at it. And his idea is the conning tower with the radar dishes and the miniguns, he wants to go and fly as fast as he can and go super dense and slam into it. Interesting move. Also with his four field up to help cushion as much as he can. Uh, this isn't really a huge problem, except he rolled and didn't hit when he went flying at it. Um, he ended up still striking it, but he didn't, you know, shear anything off. He just dang banged it. And he did a significant amount of damage. He took only a little bit of damage himself, and then he slumped off of it onto the deck where he was immediately pursued by the guards on the deck. Uh, for the most part, he did not disable the gun, however. He pretty soon had a big old brouhaha with a couple of these soldiers, uh, who are fairly competent soldiers, but a bulwark who is densified and has a force field up is a hard person to take down, as they found out. He's got super strength, not too far beyond human limits, but he's strong. And in a punch-up where they attempted to subdue him, that didn't work. Shooting him didn't work, although it is draining off his power at a pretty frightful rate. Uh, he's also cut off from the rest of the group. Ghost saw what happened, and she flew back to the boat. Uh, so they decided they were going to have to help. So they were making the approach, and the guns turned and started shooting. Well, Phalanx uh, can send out a frightful amount of ammo in a space, so it wasn't so much about avoiding all the incoming shots as trying not to get hurt. 
The problem for the guys in black was that the phalanx system rolled a 1. Or sorry, rolled a 20. Uh, apparently some of uh, Sentinel's lock had penetrated. So instead of the guns going down and just filling a cone full of automatic fire, instead it went down too far and shredded the deck, <laughs> carving a big hole in the side of the superstructure. Not generally what you want in your own guns. Um, so the group was pretty happy that they didn't get their boat shot up. Probably nobody more happy than the chauffeur, honestly. And he drove them up to the side of the boat where, you know, was still smoldering and, and ruined, twisted metal falling off the side. And at this point, Rook, Sentinel, and uh, Mr. Z climbs up onto the deck. Now, at this time, there's still 20 goons with guns, and these are much better trained than those schmucks were at the bank heist. So this fight is still ongoing. Uh, Takashi, or sorry, don't want to give away his identity. <laughs> Bulwark uh, was in the middle of the fight. He was winning for the most part against five of these trained soldiers. And he decided to look around. He was going to try to smash the uh, surveillance system and communication system. He botched his role to identify it, though, and smashed what he thought was the terminal for that. It turned out it was their, uh, well off the records Xbox that they were playing Call of Duty on. Uh, so he did that. But he does have a feeling that the systems for that and communications outward from the ship uh, to cut off any kind of reinforcements and shut off any other defenses uh, are somewhere close by. So he's on that side. Uh, Ghost is back in her by or no, Ghost went down under the water and found out that there's several layers of the ship that are protected by force fields. One of them is actually that conning tower has a force field around it, but Takashi did break through and damage it. Um, she also found out that the interior of the ship has a large force fielded off area too, which she cannot penetrate in her astral form. So what she did was she went under the water and found out that the, the force field does not go under the water for some reason, because of the nature of that force field. Then she popped up under the, the bottom of the ship and found out that there's an interior part that is protected from by force field as well. So she flew around the bottom of the boat to find out that that's all clear. The inside of the boat doesn't have force fields around it, except for that part in the core of it, which almost looks like it's a completely separate ship uh, that maybe could detach from the rest of the ship if they needed to get these prisoners away. So she's already smartly figured out two of the surprises that I wanted to throw, but okay, fine. Astral projection, what are you going to do? So that's where things stand right now. Uh, Ghost has been finding out all the little secrets about the ship, so she has a pretty good idea of the inner workings of the ship. Takashi is right at the uh, rear castle of the ship. Uh, he's got some fighting to do. He's got a lot of goons that are around him, and he's right now just trying to throw them off as they're trying to gang tackle him. And uh, the reinforcements the of uh, Rook, Sentinel, and Z are on the deck of the ship with a lot of soldiers who are all set to try to resist them. Probably not going to go so well for them, but uh, there are going to be some surprises. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see what happens well next session. So thank you for joining me. That is my State of the Dungeon address, and I'm Rob. I will see you next time. Play on!